Poof, how's it going, everybody? Happy big Sunday. Did you guys watch Defend the North? That shit was pretty fucking entertaining, considering it was Street Fighter V. I watched Tekken 7, of course, earlier, which was also entertaining. Uh, dude. And then last night's tournament. There were three tournaments that happened that I care about. Thank you. Right? In, like, one day, which was pretty cool. Last night, there was that... Uh, uh, what the hell was the name? It was the stupidest name. Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's green. I knew it was going to be a good one. Uh, yesterday's tournament where, dude, oh my god, that fight between, what was his name? Dojin or something? Abu Get Cup, that's the name. The Dojin, is, was his name Dojin? Something, I don't even know who that guy is. Where is he from? He fought against Saint, and there was so much no respect going on in that fight. Did you guys see that shit? Dojin versus Saint? There was no <laughs> respect. You. They were... Saint was dashing it on his ass like crazy, and then he didn't have any of it, and then he switched characters <laughs> around, you. and... What was up with the Lars pick at the end? He got his ass destroyed by knee. Lars? He didn't use Lars... I don't... I don't... I didn't get that part. It was a weird but fun to watch tournament, right? It's cool seeing some so and then books Jin. It's cool seeing so many different characters being used in a top eight. You don't you see a lot of uh, Jack and Dragonoff these days, uh, which is fine. You know those characters are cool, but it's, it was really refreshing to see so many characters used in the top four, right? What were the characters used in the top four? Jin. Lars, Brian, Dragonoff, Eddie, Bob, Jack, uh, Claudio, right? Or was was there a no Claudio pick? I don't remember. There were so many characters that were picked just in the top four. Gigas, yeah, Gigas was one. Uh, it was it was pretty crazy. It was a pretty crazy top four. Shaheen, that's right, dude. The Shaheen pick was like the destruction derby. Because Shaheen has that long-reaching attack throw that's 14 frames. He got that on him early on. Saint did a down forward two. Long-reaching Shaheen, I don't know what the move is, I forgot. But it, it, it's a really good punish. Does a big chunk of damage. And it was such a good pick. He mixed his ass up. I haven't seen uh, a match that entertaining in a while. That was sick. It was a cool tournament. I really, it was like super, oh yeah. Forward back two. That's what it is. That was a sick punish. Uh, the tournament was called Abuget Cup. Really awesome name. Really awesome. Oh, and the commentators were not that great either. I mean, you know, you got to remember, let's face the facts. Commentary, uh, uh, we're starting to realize as the years go by, it's a lot harder than it looks, I guess, right? I mean, uh, you really come to appreciate what you can get these days when it comes to commentators when you see you know I mean it's not like they were like they're probably great humans and they probably love Tekken and they did their best but you know you. you gotta get a screwdriver to screw in a screw you gotta get the right person to do the job you gotta get the right tool for the right job or whatever you get my point right those guys probably are very good at whatever they do but it seems as though they're not commentators so that's not a bad thing. You know, it's unfortunate for that specific tournament, right? Because everyone's hating, right? But it's good because you understand like how important commentary is. And now more than ever, tournaments are really realizing it and they're they're noticing it. So this is like I've said this for years. There's only two components to this. You need the players and you need the presentation and the presentation is almost completely the commentators like as much of an effect as the overlay has that's it the rest is the stream quality you know everyone needs to work together but the commentators are like the the front men they're the pawns on the chessboard right they're the ones at the front line they're the ones that will you know make it dope you know so i think it's it, people are really starting to realize it now especially because some of the tournaments don't have the best commentators, you know, so it's good shit. Overall, it's good, even if, I mean, the matches were good, even if the commentary wasn't as good as you want it to be, in the long run, it's good, because, you know, 
you're going to get what you want in the future, I think. Mm, I got to thank a bunch of people. Oh, my God. I got other shit to tell you about, too. Oh, my God. Punk got his ass kicked by fucking IDOM. <sighs> wow. That was crazy. I don't even give a shit about Street Fighter V. But, you know, I've been telling you guys, Street Fighter V, it's only watchable because of the players. Today's match of Punk versus IDOM was so sick because of the players. Who cares about the match? It doesn't even matter. It's about how this guy always got his ass kicked by Punk. Let, all right. You guys know who Ronda Rousey is? Ronda Rousey was the fucking the greatest pound for pound fighter on the planet, allegedly, until Bagoosh, she suffered her first loss, and it's game over. And Punk, he really got owned up at Evo, and not that he got owned up, you know, he did great, but he took it hard, right? So now we got a Ronda Rousey situation here, right? He got his ass destroyed today by Idom. He got 6 0 right? 6 0 Ronda Rousey, right? So it's not necessarily right, but it's building this sick storyline. Right? I'm getting excited about it. I can't wait for the next time I watch Punk play and the next time I watch Punk play against IDOM. And I don't like Street Fighter V, right? So Street Fighter V, Capcom in general, is very lucky that the players create these dope uh, storylines for them. Because that is like some Ronda Rousey shit if I've ever heard it, right? Punk is like an unstoppable beast, dominating everybody. He goes to EVO, has an awesome performance that he should never even have like taken poorly at all. But the fact that he took it so hard, you know, and it was like a big, like, it, it dinged his, uh, I don't know what it did, right? But he took it really hard, right? So... I wonder if we could have something going here. You know, it's just fun. I thought that it was fun to watch. I was more entertained watching Defend the North than I have been watching any Street Fighter in ages. Maybe even more than I enjoyed uh, Evo in some aspects. I was really excited about watching that because, dude, he got owned up. When was the last time you saw Punk get fucked up like that? I don't think I have ever seen that. He's so good. Punk is so good that it's like he's already won. Everyone always says that. Punk already won. The whole chat, the entire tournament was like, Punk already won this. Punk won this. Give him the money. He got 6 0 would That was crazy. And I don't even give a fuck about Street Fighter. That's like the most important part to remember here. They're so lucky that these storylines write themselves, right? And storylines in general are the most important part. Who cares about the game, right? I mean, that's if there's no better proof... <laughs> Thank Street you. Fighter V is the perfect example. Damn, I got tons of people to thank. Man, so much cool stuff happened in the last 24 hours. Um, did you stream Abigail Cup? No, I didn't. I didn't even know about it. I didn't know... I, I Like, I didn't know who was running the stream to get permission to stream it, and it was in the middle of the night, and I was tired. So I didn't stream it, but I did watch it, and it was dope. Uh, one of the coolest top fours ever. So how many characters did we count? I think we counted like seven characters that were used in the top four at a high level. That was a very entertaining Tekken tournament. Because usually you get such a bland top four, right, when it comes to character usage. So I thought it was awesome. Between those two Echo Fox guys, uh, I mean, it's always fucking dragging off Heihachi or uh, Jack, right? So I don't know. It was awesome, though. I enjoyed it. Oh, let me turn this up. Uh, what about Lord Daigo? I don't even know what context you're talking about Daigo in. I don't even know what you're talking about. What about Daigo? Hey, what's up, Fast Hands Cody? What's up, everybody? Excuse me. Uh, Taunt Jet Upper? Yeah, I know, right? And he's a monster. Uh, I was so confused with the... Lars pick. Why didn't he change from Lars either? What the fuck is he thinking? I don't know what he was thinking. Uh, but whatever. Uh, oh, you know what else? I got other shit to tell you too. So, ever since early 2017 came out and I've been playing fighting games again, specifically on arcade sticks, I've, I've kind of, you know, the old... I used to have a really big, like, interest in arcade sticks. 
you know, and like I I I kind of lost that because for a long time all I did was play Resident Evil and Souls games and shit, right? <laughs> but uh, I've recently kind of gotten, you know, I've been thinking about different arcade sticks that I don't own and etc. and so on and so forth. So I decided I would hit up an old secret black market arcade stick dealer <laughs> that I know and see what kind of inventory he has. And you know, I bought four arcade sticks today. He sent me a picture of all his arcade sticks that he was willing to sell. It's not Mark Man. Uh, I don't think he would sell his arcade sticks. But anyway, uh, he sent me a picture of his arcade sticks. I was tempted to buy more than four. When I saw all the different arcade sticks that were there, I was like, oh shit. But I, you know, I, I, I only got four. <laughs> I got four arcade sticks today. Yeah, it's a lot. They're all black market, hella illegal. They're not even legal in like, like 69 states. You, if you get caught with any of these, two, okay, I bought. Listen, I bought. Aris is the best color commentator for Tekken. No one is as top tonier. Markman is best at play-by-play, -play and you two are an amazing duo. Hey, thanks, Rombowski. Muchos Garcias. Thanks, man. You know, everyone always talks about, like, play-by-play -play and color commentary, and I don't believe in that whatsoever. I don't even give a shit about it. People try to, like, explain how that exists, and I personally don't even think that that really exists when the two commentators are good. When both commentators are good, there's no such thing as like a roll, you know? You just watch it and enjoy it, and it's simple mathematics. There's no roll, there's no full back, half back, you know, power, power, power bottom, you know? There's no roll. You just enjoy it, and you take turns enjoying it, and it's easy. Uh, but whatever, whatever, I don't look at it that way. However, I do appreciate the compliment regardless. And and the dollar dues. You should show the arcade sticks on stream. Uh, I haven't gotten them yet. I'm gonna get them sometime this week, hopefully. But I bought four today. Four arcade sticks off the Armenian black market. And let me tell you, two of them are really cool, right? Two of the sticks that I got are really cool. The other two are so cool that I'm like, like. Super excited about them. Two of them are super cool. The other two are too cool to even talk about, or I'm gonna get too too turned. Uh, oh, envy, sir, st, and read read tar dukes. Thanks very much. Uh, would you ever buy a hitbox? Uh, I used to own a hitbox. I didn't buy it. I someone gave it to me as a gift, um, and I gave it away. It's just not for me. I tried it out though, and I like it. I mean, I like it in terms of it being cheap. And, uh, super cheap, actually. I remember when I was playing against Tyrant. You guys know Tyrant, the Injustice player? When I was playing Injustice, he's a Mortal Kombat player too, but when I was playing Injustice 1 against him, he was one of my main training partners, right? You know what that motherfucker used to do? He used to double tap backdash to make shit whiff. And it was like, because you know, backdash is invincible. Miller, it was so days. cheap. It was too cheap. It was so cheap. The way he would double tap a backdash uh, visually to make everything whiff so it wouldn't take chip damage, I was like, man, fuck this thing. It's so cheap. Uh, anyway, but I do condone using it because it's it's legal. Damn, Jesse rocks with the silent $30 dues while I'm over here talking shit about Hitbox. I mean, it's good. I'm not talking shit. But, anyway, thanks very much. That's very, very nice of you. Jesse Rocks, Muchos Garcias. I agree with you on the, the name. 7up Jawa, thanks for the Twitch Prime. I appreciate that. Mm, what were we talking about? Oh, yeah. Um, hitbox. 